Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to remap your buttons on your Xbox Elite Controller Series 1 or Series 2 on your Windows PC. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing, of course, you're going to need to have is your Xbox controller connected to your PC. So this can either be wireless or wired. Either should work without any problems. For me, I always recommend doing this method wired as it has the least amount of issues. However, if you're connected wirelessly, it should also work without any issues. If you are having any issues, I would definitely recommend trying a cable first and then seeing if that solves your problem. We're going to be clicking on our start button on the bottom left and we're going to be searching for store. And we're going to be looking for the Microsoft Store app right here. We're going to need to click this open and here if you're not already logged in you are going to need to be logged into your account once you're logged in you currently have the store open we're going to be clicking on the search button here on the top right and we're going to be searching for xbox accessories and here we should see this pop up here for the xbox accessories app we're going to be left clicking into this and we're going to be installing this on our pc so at the moment i already have it installed so instead of install there's a launch button right here but the first thing you're gonna to have to do is come here install this once it's installed, we're going to be clicking launch and we're going to be opening up the app. From this point, you should be brought to the Xbox accessory screen. And here we should see all of our currently connected controllers. So at the moment, as mentioned, I am using an Xbox Series Elite 2. As you can see, I currently have this on screen right now. You can see all of our mappings right here. You can see the currently selected profile. You can see all of the profiles available. And what we can do from this point is actually click to configure this controller. And here we're going to be able to edit the profiles that are set up. We can create new profiles and I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do it. So the first thing we have here is the left side option with our profiles. So here we can create a new profile if we want by clicking the new profile. And you can see all of our currently existing profiles on the first, second and third slots on our controller. So for today's video, I'm going to be using my SCOBY profile, which I have right here. If you would like to change the slot, you can simply select your profile, come to the slot and select which slot you would like to have this on. So at the moment, I'm going to be leaving this on slot number one, although you can feel free to set this up however you'd like. The next thing we're going to be able to do is actually edit and configure this slot. So what we're going to be doing is coming here to the pencil icon. We're going to be clicking this and here we're going to be brought to the mappings for all of our buttons. So from this point, if you would like to edit or change any button, what you can do is come to the button you would like to change. So I'm going to be using one of the back paddles right here, which I currently have mapped to Y. I'm going to be clicking it and here we can select one of three things. We can select what the primary button should do. We can select what the shift button should do and we can use as a shift button. So at the moment, I'm going to talk about the primary first, and then I'll be talking about the shift options in a second. So what you can do is set the primary button. So this will be the default press for this actual button. So here you can set it to whatever you want. I'm going to be setting it as the A button in today's video as an example. And now our primary action for this button is going to be set up as the A button. The next thing we can do is set up a shift button or use as a shift button. So what the shift button is going to do is going to allow us to use the button as an extra button. So what we can do is map any button on our controller as a shift button. And when this is pressed in, the shift action will then activate on all other buttons on the controller. So basically one button can actually act as two different things, depending on if you have the shift button pressed in or not. So for example, if we use our lower left paddle as a shift button and then set our shift button on the upper left paddle to A, whenever we have our lower left paddle pressed, our upper left paddle will then activate as an A button when our shift button is pressed in. So this basically activates as a secondary button whenever you have a shift button enabled. Now this isn't mandatory, you don't need to have a shift button. And for my liking, I don't actually like using this. However, this is a nice option that you can have. So you'll need to set up a shift button paddle, which will basically press and then change all other buttons that are pressed when that is held in to a shift button action, which is really cool. However, it's not really my thing, but this is what you can set up here. Once you're happy with everything here, simply click OK, and you can go through and remap everything you want on this controller if you would like. You can map your left triggers, your bumpers, your buttons, everything else here you want. You can change exactly how you want. The next thing we can do is come to our left stick and here we can actually set up a curve and calibration. So what you can do is set up a primary and a shift action. Again, as mentioned with the shift before, we can set up our sensitivity curve. So by default, it's just a flat line as you can see here. You can set up a delayed, which means it will slightly delay when trying to press and you can even adjust this curve here as well. So this will take a little bit of experimentation to get exactly how you want, but it is recommended to play around with these, go in game and see what you like. For me with the left stick, I like a default curve and you can also select what you have here here, either radial, axis independent or true diagonals. So you can choose exactly what you want here as well. 
For me, for the most part, I like leaving all of these as default, but it's nice to have all these options here. The next thing we have is the right stick and we have the exact same controls here. We can set it to primary and shift default and you can add any type of curving here you want as well. So you can really easily customize this exactly how you want. The next thing we have is the triggers and here we can select the sensitivity of the triggers from where they activate to where they will be at 100%. And of course, this will be in combination with how you have them set up with the button on the back. So you might want to experiment here and see what works best for you. Again, I like the default here, but if you would like to mirror your triggers and any changes you make on one will be copied on the other, you can enable this so they'll be automatically linked together. So any changes you make on one will be saved on the other, which is a nice feature to have here. The next thing we have is the vibration and here we can control the vibration level from four different points. The left trigger, the right trigger, the left main and the right main. And here you can customize this exactly how you want from zero to hundred percent. And it will be indicated here using this icon. So you can really customize this to see exactly how you like it. And then the last thing we can do here is adjust the brightness of our button on our controller. So here you can go from fully off to fully on or even somewhere in the middle. You can actually seeing this be reflected live on your controller. So you can really customize this how you like and set it up exactly how you want. Once you're happy with everything, I'm going, to, I'm going to be clicking back on the top left. And just like that, all of your button profiles are saved. The next thing we can do here is rename your slot. If you would like to rename your profile to anything you want, you can delete a profile here and you can even copy a profile. If you'd like to make a duplicate of this, maybe change one or two things, save it to another slot and then set it up and customize it exactly how you want. So overall, the software is very easy to use. It's very similar to what you can get in the Xbox One or the Xbox series, except we have it on a desktop format like this, which I think is really cool. And that's exactly how you can set up and map your Xbox Series Elite controllers using Windows. Before we get to the end of the video, I want to give a huge shout out to the members who help support the channel, Bo Franks and Sean Daly. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to join the channel and be shouted out in future videos and get some other perks, be sure to click the join button underneath any video on the channel. You can see the different perks and choose exactly what works for you. It'll really help me out and I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to set up an Xbox Elite controller on your Windows PC. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to support me, be sure to drop a super thanks in this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.